Welcome back everyone. Thanks for tuning in. This week's video is going to be a bit of a just random hodgepodge of locations. I could be at home taking a picture of a flower bud or a bird by a feeder or I could be out on location like I am today along a section of the Boardman River Trail System. Just anywhere. The camera of choice for this week is the Panasonic Lumix FZ50. This is a beast of a camera and I just love this camera to death. I don't know why I don't use it more often. And of course, once you know it, I forgot my tripod that I rely on for steady video. But we will press on and see what happens out there today. The day started off pretty good thus far. It's pretty warm. It's going to be about 10 degrees warmer than it was yesterday, which is always good news. When you're getting out the camera so your hands don't freeze in this northern Michigan weather. Got up this morning, went outside to take care of the chickens, got them some food and water, got to hang out with them for a little bit, and got some eggs for breakfast. I tell you, those eggs from chickens at home are so much better than the ones that you pick up from the store. Just so much better. So this morning I was thinking about how I would approach this video a little bit differently from what is typically seen on YouTube when it comes to looking at older digital cameras. This isn't a review, this isn't to go over all the features, but what I do want to do is explain what about this camera, in this case the Lumix FZ50, do I find useful for the type of photography I enjoy, which is natural history photography. Okay, so there are five main factors that make me really want to grab this camera before I head out the door at any point of the day. The first feature of this camera that makes me want to grab every morning has got to be the zoom lens that this camera has. It's a Leica lens, so it's a high quality lens, and it's already extended within the camera barrel, so that's why the camera is so long. Um, you could say you could cut off about an inch and a half of this barrel, and it could be more compact, but that means then that the camera has to spend more time starting up and extending the lens, much like the older FZ, uh, as you could say FZ1. 2, 10, and 15, and 20 before it. It took a bit of time for that lens to come out, but with this guy, the lens is already ready to go. And the second feature, which is along with the first feature that I really appreciate about this camera, is on the side of the lens barrel, there's options for focusing, which that means that there's no need to go into the menu to go to macro or super macro or manual focus. It's all right there with a little toggle switch which is so handy when you're out in the field and you just want to get the shot and you might not have the time to fiddle around in menus to grab something to get started. And the third feature of this camera that I can't live without has got to be, and it seems like a minor thing, are the camera lugs on here for the straps. I should say the strap lugs rather. These accept the larger strap diameter like on a DSLR or mirrorless camera which opens up your possibilities for much higher quality um, neck straps to carry your camera, which to me is a big deal because I like having my camera around my neck. It's classic. It might be a bit heavy after a while, but it's the ultimate option for me. The fourth factor or feature of this camera that makes me want to take it out every day is a minor one, and I mention this a lot on my channel. If you can see on the bottom here, there's a metal tripod socket that's in line with the central axis of the lens barrel, which some could say isn't that big a deal if you're shooting handheld, which I do most of the time. But if you're on a tripod, that balances this camera beautifully, especially for longer exposure shots in the wind, say like at a beach or something. And then the fifth feature or factor of this camera that I cannot live without is this flipping screen that it possesses. It swivels, so you can do the low angles. You can kind of give it the old tilty-wilty like that. So you can have the screen out. Or if you don't need the screen, you can flip it and tuck it away so it's completely safe from knocks and dings and stuff. That's a big deal to me. So those are the five features of the camera that make me want to take it out on adventures such as this. As far as what I want to capture today with the camera, I'm honestly not quite sure. It'd be great to capture an image of a red winged blackberry, which you can hear now over in the cattails in the distance a few stone throws. Might catch, um, you know, an image of a different type of bird. I think there's some blue jays out here. I might hear a sparrow of some sort. Or I might just go with a 
great classic landscape. I have a spot in mind down the trail right along the river with some cobblestones and stuff on the bank. While I'm at it, I might as well capture an image of the landscape right um, behind me. There's some great clouds, there's some light coming, there's some highlights in the cattails in the foreground. With the Lumix, I'm going to have my settings probably at f8.0 and uh, ISO is going to probably be, I think 100, I think that's as low as it goes on here. 100 and my metering is of course average because that's how I do things, I like average metering. And of course, my focal length is going to be at 35 millimeter because that's as wide as this camera lens goes. I decided to take a quick jaunt over to a location I actually shot a previous video in on this channel. I was hoping to maybe see some of the native swans that I saw here then, but alas, they're not here. I don't know what happened to them. I wish I could see them again. That was such an amazing time in my life to see those native swans. But anyway, behind me I can hear some morning doves and some chickadees and, um, of course, the red-winged blackbirds. And the stand of saplings in front of me I'm pointing them right in here. There's a small little grouping of goldfinches. I think I might be able to use this camera to some decent effect to get a somewhat close in shot of these guys. I'm honestly pretty stoked. I could just easily call it good now and just keep on adventuring, but I want to get one more shot at a river location I have in mind. But already I've captured two images I'm really fond of, aside from the landscape one. One is the red winged blackbird, which I was hoping to get, and secondly, as a bonus, an image of a goldfinch. Booyah! The river behind me is going to be the last location I photographed today. There's still some clouds hanging up in the air. It's starting to transition a little bit, but I think I can still get a good shot out of this. Well, I think that'll wrap her up for the day. Pretty great morning, actually. There's, like I said, the images of the birds and then some great landscapes. And then, of course, just enjoying this warm April day in Northern Michigan. What a great way to start the week. Today there wasn't any photography, but there was some other good things. I had a chance to work on my mountain bikes, which is something that's important to me. I find mountain biking just as fun as photography, and I think they go hand in hand. Sometimes you can get to a location faster than a mountain bike, and it helps keep you in shape. And I got to take care of the chickens as well, which is always a good thing. But as far as tomorrow goes, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. I might get out to photograph something, I might not. But either way, stay tuned. Storms did happen this morning. Um, I think we're between a storm system at the moment. There's been a lot of thunder and lightning, but that means in between that there could be some great opportunities for some landscape photography and maybe the skies open up a little bit. Um, I saw some sun a little bit earlier coming out and I'm hoping that will work out for a little while before the next storm system comes. Hard to say on days like this though. This morning I found myself at Twin Lakes. I was hoping that there would be a bit more fog still lingering from the storm front coming in and the temperature changes and all the science that creates the fog over the water and the water that creates the fog of course creates the fog that goes into the trees but alas that's not to happen today but I did notice these really pretty cedar branches so I'm going to get a couple of macro shots of those today. Really pretty. I think these are white cedars, but I'm not 100% certain. It's kind of hard to tell with the uh, wet branches. Something that I think is missing from the FC50 that I wish was retained from its predecessor, the FC20, is the constant aperture of f2.8. Now, the FC50 has a f3.7 aperture at its longest zoom range, but it's just not the same and I really miss that open bright aperture throughout the entire zoom range, especially when it's overcast like it is today and you're trying to get a close-up macro shot of something at the maximum zoom of the camera. That extra little 
bit of openness, I guess you could call it, really helps out. As for the rest of the day, I'm not sure what to expect yet, but I will, of course, provide an update at the end of the day. Not sure. I'm hoping that the clouds come out um, and break up a little bit so the sun can come through. I really like those dramatic shots when the sun is coming through the clouds, but beggars can't be choosers, right? To finish off Wednesday, I'm going to head down to a section of the Bourbon River Trail by the rapids, and I am going to hopefully grab a couple images low down from near the rocks looking up and hopefully get some nice cloud action in there too because I love my clouds. Actually, I look right next to me. I'm pointing kind of towards the river. That works. If you look over there actually, because of all the rain we've gotten over the last few hours, the ordinary high water mark of this river is up above um, its normal area or its normal boundaries, if you will. And actually, I'll turn the camera. You can see right there how the water actually is up that high right now. So as far as me photographing the rocks from a low angle up towards the sky, I think that might be, no pun intended, a wash. I think I'm going to actually call for the day. There's some clouds coming in, but the way the light's hitting everything, it's not really what I'm feeling I wanted to capture. So I think I'm going to call good for the day. But we'll see what tomorrow, Thursday brings. Good morning. Today is Friday the 7th of April and this morning I'm out in Acme at one of the new Tart Trail trailhead locations out by the Acme Mire and behind me right over here I have my Schwinn mountain bike. It's a modification of like a hybrid bike. I call it Timber. Timber is a great companion on any trail paved or not. So today I'm out here with my Pantech FZ50. I'm going to ride along this new corridor of the trail, which I haven't been on yet, so it's all new to me, and hopefully I'll grab a couple shots to end the video this week. So I'm a bit disappointed. I went down the trail, and it started out promising. You go down a nice hill, and it leads you into a swampy cedar area and you go over a nice bridge with a creek underneath and then it dumps you out in some parking lots with some new development and after that I don't know where the trail goes so I headed back and on the way back I ended up finding a really cool composition I want to share with you guys alright so my composition is right up here there's a stand of what are probably maple trees or oak trees probably oak up in the field and it's silhouetted against some beautiful blue sky with some nice thick clouds right in this area right here I'm going to get out the camera and take a shot yeah here's a better way to show you it's right in here and of course this isn't zoomed in but you get the idea it's in this little framed area right there Something that I do want to mention that I forgot to mention earlier is say that yesterday I didn't go out with my camera at all but after dinner I did spend some time going through my images on the computer to see what I'd like to put into a book of some sort. And I'm not sure what form the book's going to take yet, but there's going to be a book coming out this year at some point that I'll be publishing. And if you're interested in grabbing a copy of that or anything at all, or even print, let me know. If you are at all interested in learning more about this book as the updates are provided, please, in the description below, find the link to my Instagram account. Um, there I think I will make the effort to put some updates in regarding the book. And you can also follow me on the YouTube channel, of course. I'll provide regular updates on that. And on the YouTube social. If you subscribe, you can get updates between videos on the social part of the whole platform, which is pretty handy. But yeah, so I'm just getting the bike put in the rack for the day. And see what happens for the rest of the day. So I decided to come outside into the backyard today 
in the afternoon. It's about 2.30 right now. And I'm just going to enjoy the sun and I'm hoping to grab a couple close-up shots of some birds foraging on the leaf litter that's in front of me in just a little bit here and just have to stay quiet for a little bit so they can show up and we'll see what happens. But as always, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your time. And if there's a moral to this video, it is this. Just get out there and do fun stuff. It doesn't matter if it's a great adventure or if it's just in your own backyard. So until next time, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and get outside and get some fresh air.